So, Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Farooq. How are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. And hello, everyone. I'm doing amazing. Perfect. So, just before uh, we get started, I just want to give an introduction to yourself. And um, I know there's a lot of degrees and, and masters here, so I'm just going to quickly go over them. So, you have degrees in um, Alam also, and you're also educated in uh, Islamic finance and also general finance and banking and all that stuff. So, mashallah there. Uh, and then you also have uh, a master's from London and then a PhD um, with INSEF where you've done uh, a PhD in Islamic finance specifically. So, you're, so when it comes to Islamic finance, you're like the cream of the crop. You know what you're, what you're doing. You are a very accredited individual. And I mean, I'm honored that you came on my podcast and because uh, I'm really an, a no man when it comes to Islamic finance. So I'm super thankful. So Jazakallah Khair for coming. You're most welcome. Jazakallah Khaira. And I'm just a humble student. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and, you know, th- this is what makes, uh, you know, the Muslim excellence, uh, you know, people and scholars um, really valuable that, you know, you guys are humble, always there to help us out. So thank you. Before I get started, um, do you want to quickly give yourself a, a, you know, give your own introduction as to um, what you did your PhD in, um, where you're from, and how you're liking Ramadan so far? Uh, okay, inshallah. Uh, so basically, I'm from Karachi, Pakistan. Um, I studied uh, Sharia in Pakistan also, did an Alim course over there. It's like a traditional Islamic, uh, Sharia, uh, Islamic studies for eight years. And uh, before that, I did also memorization of Quran. Quran. Um, uh, during my time in, in Karachi, when I was uh, doing um, uh, Madrasa studies, I also studied uh, economics. I did bachelor's and master's from Karachi University. And then moved to London. So I did uh, MSc Banking and Finance from Queen Mary University of London. And uh, after that, I moved to Malaysia and uh, did my PhD in Islamic Finance from NCF. Um, uh, during that time, I also started a full-time job as a researcher yeah. for ISRA, uh, which is uh, uh, as uh, under Central Bank of Malaysia, by the way. Uh, it's a research institute for specifically for Islamic finance. Amazing. And uh, after that, uh, I moved to Dubai in 2019 and uh, started my own company which is called Alif Technologies. Yes, we're going to get in touch with, we're going to talk a little bit about that and also Sharia experts, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So now, right now, currently, I am co-founder of Alif Technologies and Sharia experts. Nice. Uh, Sharia experts is based in London and uh, Alif Technologies is based in Dubai. So you must be enjoying both the weathers and one's very warm and the one's kind of (laughs) cold. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. But uh, luckily, I am in uh, Dubai, so... Uh, uh, Ramadan is also very fine for me. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I know. I'm in Canada and, and uh, for us, everything's in lockdown. So I can't do Taravi yeah. and, you know, all that stuff. So, Kar, I'm happy that it's working out for you. So what brought you to Islamic finance? Like, you know, a, 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 a person who's studying banking, then all of a sudden want to study Islamic finance and then also Alim. So what brought you towards Islamic finance specifically? Uh, actually, uh, I was very lucky that uh, I, uh, I, was, uh, I was guided by, by many Sharia scholars and also specifically my brother uh, who is an engineer but uh, he also had the passion to become an alim but then uh, he was not able to do so but uh, he actually uh, supported me mm-hmm. to become an alim, mm-hmm. mashallah. So with the proper guidance from the very beginning I was very clear that uh, I was going to do this so it's it was not like uh, I started uh, um, studying in madrasa first, mm-hmm. and then I I also started uh, doing uh, I mean uh, pursuing my studies in economics or finance or banking. So it was uh, from the day one it was very clear to me that okay, this is the path I am going to choose, and uh, I I'm going to pursue this. Uh, it's because of the one main factor is that uh, in our societies, people always think that the Sharia scholars, they, they are confined to masjid. They have very specific activities, yeah. very limited scope. So yeah. uh, for me, I mean, uh, being uh, studying Sharia was my passion, but uh-huh. I really wanted to show also and to also to myself and to others 
that there are so it's the scope is unlimited yeah there, yeah. there are so many um unlimited opportunities there you can become an alim as well as something else yeah and mashallah i really that topic right there is a, a huge topic of its own and i would love i really want to talk to you about that as a whole and that's that's where my second aspect of my channel is all about is the concept of you know growing and, and thinking smart and you know thinking halal and and, and growing and self-development uh, I, I i think i will have to call you back and we'll, we'll have to talk just specifically about that because i'm a strong believer of that also because people think either you do deen or you do dunya and yeah. i think we've lost the whole aspect of it it works together right and that, that's the whole thing what is sharia right sharia is laws to uh, you know to to uh, maintain society and we think it's just sh sharia is for the the ones who are doing zikr and and, and who are uh, praying and the, the rest of the world is for you know the rest care so that's mashallah a very important topic so whoever is listening understand that you know deen works in hand in hand with your worldly stuff okay so i know you're an expert in islamic finance and uh, uh I, I, sorry if i may just add yeah yeah one small statement in that that uh, even islam is not only about worship i mean it has already blended uh worship into your uh root, daily routines and also uh common acts so and that is islam really wants you to do everything that's why uh uh, there is one dua uh, supplication in the Quran mentioned that Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana. Yeah. So like it is basically first you are asking hasana, which is like uh, oh, oh, oh our Lord, give us uh, uh, hasana is like uh, uh, best things yeah. or blessings. Blessings in in the world. Yeah. So you cannot go, uh, you cannot do, uh, you cannot seek blessings in the world without doing worldly things yes so you have to do them and yeah. then hasana. yeah so then and then also i want the blessings and the best of the things in the in the akhirah hereafter as well so basically it's a very good balance islam basically proposes a very good balance of worldly life and the spiritual life mm -hmm. and uh, and really it really wants its follower to, to do that Perfect. This leads me right into my second question: the concept of the importance of Islamic finance and how it can actually one benefit society at large, so Muslims, non-Muslims, and then two, how does it benefit a Muslim in his own life? Once you know, spiritual aspect is for sure. You know, if you do good, you get good, and all that stuff. But also, I want you to talk about how Islamic finance is actually very useful to gain wealth, making money. Okay. Perfect. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, uh, Islamic finance is not uh, only for Muslims. It yeah. is also for non-Muslims. Why? It's it's just a mode of financing. It's an alternative financing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then everybody who seeks and uh, who, who really sees that there is a there is a, there is a value in it, then they can they can basically adopt it or uh, they can use it for their own financial uh, benefits. So that is number one thing. Uh, secondly, is that uh, Islamic finance is based on trade, mm -hmm. and it's not it's it it avoids riba or in, the concept of interest is already there, so that it avoids it in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you can easily see that uh, when it comes to trade, then actually Islamic finance promoting business, mm -hmm. it, it is promoting sale and purchase. Mm -hmm. and it is proposing and it is promoting partnerships mm -hmm. so because of that uh you you can easily see that there is a uh, uh it is not only sharia based which will benefit you in the in the hereafter but it is also it also has some mechanism already there embedded in it and incorporated in it in a way that it will benefit the whole society now uh talking about that uh, about individuals that how they can get rich. it's all about the money it's all, all about yeah. the mashallah money yeah. but <laughs> I, 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 I tell you three things yeah that uh, number one is how do you how do, the concept of wealth yeah and uh, the concept of being rich ah, okay. so, so this is basically you cannot narrow down this concept into financial terms only okay so so there are three I, I see that I see that there are three main components. Number one okay. is of course financial. So money 
is one aspect of being rich and being wealthy mm -hmm. number two is basically you have uh, an independent life mm -hmm. and uh, also that uh, you have so much experience mm -hmm. and uh, and also uh, you have already uh, have vast knowledge mm -hmm. so that is basically uh, another aspect of it be for being rich and wealthy mm -hmm. so you have a vast knowledge and uh, an in-depth uh, experience also so that is also uh, uh, something which uh, I think that we need to we need to consider and the third thing is like comfort Okay. Comfort and relaxation. So, like when you are ma more mature because you have more experience, more knowledge, then the level of comfort basically gets higher. Okay. So, like you, you can be. So, all these things are basically, uh, uh, I, I would like to say, contribute in mm -hmm. terms of uh, a person being rich or wealthy. Okay. So, so I think that of course money is already there, but it's only one factor over only. So you're saying. I don't sleep much so, and I'm not really comfortable with that so that I should sleep more no, actually it's it's basically a peace of mind actually. yeah it yeah. gives you peace of mind and comfort yeah. in that sense so for uh, so because of that you can easily see that uh, Islamic finance is promoting entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and trade mm -hmm. and uh, and things like that so because of that people as a community grow Mm -hmm. and they get matured and also they become stronger yeah so and then that is basically the the true meaning of richness or wealthiness amazing amazing now this you you a little bit talked about entrepreneurship in there and uh, so mm -hmm. this kind of leads me to my next question and i and i i think uh, i'm a strong believer of uh entrepreneurship and especially being a muslim why we should be uh working towards entrepreneurship in the long run um so i want your opinion on this you don't have to agree with me um, I want you to be fully honest. What, what's your opinion on entrepreneurship, like having a job versus entrepreneurship, and um, you know the future of this ummah, in general, like uh, Muslims, when it comes to uh, um, wealth and and growth, um, when uh, and, and and in comparison f uh, from job to entrepreneurship, because I see I know you have you have done both. You have your own businesses, and uh, and you had uh, I think six years working for um, Isra. So you know you know you know the feeling of both. Yeah, so uh, I must uh, uh, share one experience with you. When I was in Malaysia, mm -hmm. so I have a very good friend. He was a very knowledgeable person, uh, but religious wise, religion wise, he was uh, uh, he was following Hinduism. Okay. Uh, and then uh, one day he met me and said that Farooq, why don't you start your own business or do something entrepreneurial? Because uh, your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, engage in trade uh, for nine tenths of sustenance yes. is found therein. So it was pretty amazing for me. And then he said that uh, this is the statement of your Prophet. You should know better because you are a Sharia <laughs> scholar. So it was coming from a person, yes. and he was a very nice person. I yeah. really respect him. Yeah. Um, so. That basically uh, strike me very hard. That okay, yeah, he, what he's saying is truly, uh, uh, truly amazing. And before, uh, just to give you his background, he was also working for Central Bank of Malaysia before, uh -huh. and then he left his job and then started his own company, and he was very successful. Oh, mashallah. So that's what he said to me. So because of that, uh, I also started looking into it very seriously, and mm -hmm. uh, I found that uh, uh, there was no reason for me to, to stick to the job only. I'm not saying that uh, we should not be doing some jobs, but uh, I think that jobs are very good for, for gaining experience to, to observe things in a very, uh, in a, uh, I can say, safe environment yeah. where you can sustain and also learn mm -hmm. and grow. Mm -hmm. But uh, ultimately, uh, you, uh, I think that it is a good idea to, to start your own business or become your own boss. Perfect. So then what made you want to start a business within uh, with Sharia Experts and Alif Technology? And this is when you can talk about both of them um, when it comes to crypto. And and, and and do you do stocks also or is it just auditing in crypto? Okay, uh, actually my journey started in fintech uh, with uh, with the research I undertook uh, in in Isra uh, for for cryptocurrencies being Sharia compliant. Oh nice. So 
so I was basically uh, heading the team of researchers. And that was the first thing I, it came to my mind. Actually, what happened is uh, in 2014, I discovered Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, as a researcher, I was studying it because uh, another very good topic of interest for me is uh, money mm-hmm. in Islam mm-hmm. and monetary system. Yeah. So because of that, I, I, I studied that in 2000. I started studying Bitcoin in 2014, although uh, unfortunately, I knew uh, I didn't uh, invest Purchase? in it at oh. that time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was. I think at that time it was only under one hundred dollars. So. so <laughs> Cat, I started, Cat. Yeah, it happens. So I started. Uh, I started studying it, uh, and I won. I was very excited to see that what would be its future. But uh, that's all about it. So then, when uh, we started research about Sharia compliance of Bitcoin, specifically in 2016, mm-hmm. so I was chosen as the head of that research team, and uh, so we started the, this uh, uh, research. And due to that research, also I was engaged in uh, various projects of uh, crypto-based projects and blockchain-based projects, mm-hmm. and I was introduced to fintech. So after that, what I have seen is that uh, there are so much uh, people who are confused, mm-hmm. and uh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. And another thing is like uh, Sharia expertise were uh, were uh, very very obsolete. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this domain mm-hmm. I so, mean they still are that's why it's still on, yeah, yeah that's so why I said you are a gem for it's us like, uh, it, so it's like I have seen so many fatwas based on very superficial uh, uh, information and knowledge uh-huh. in fact like uh, I, I was when I was talking to some senior Sharia scholars who are like pioneers of Islamic financial industry mm-hmm. uh, I, I faced a lot of challenge because they say it's very technical, we do not understand it. Yeah. Some Sharia scholars argued that uh, uh, it does not exist at all. It's completely a hypothetical thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, so I know this because because I, I know who you're referring to, and uh, like they're very well known in Islamic finance, and and I agree with you. Um, when but when I read that, I was like, but it's not. You can use like Ethereum is being used mm-hmm. to build and develop on, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's the yeah. future. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and also, it, like, uh, even like some very basic uh, arguments uh, were given uh, against uh, crypto assets. Uh, for example, like somebody said that, and then they, this was basically, again, coming from a very senior Sharia scholar that I do not know Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> so I cannot uh, endorse Bitcoin. Subhanallah. That's, that's Subhanallah. very simple. So, but the thing is, whether you endorse Bitcoin or not, Mm-hmm. whether you have arrived on a conclusion that uh, crypto assets are halal or haram mm-hmm. doesn't matter but for me what matters is like you have to have a very systematic approach towards it and mm-hmm. in-depth knowledge mm-hmm. correct knowledge mm-hmm. we can have uh, difference of uh, differences of opinion i really respect that mm-hmm. but uh, the methodology you are using in arriving a fatwa uh, on a fatwa and a conclusion Mm-hmm. has to be very well established yeah, so. so that was my 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 um my argument so again uh, there are so because of with that thing in my mind i started alif technologies to basically do three things number one is the the uh, the most important and the foremost thing is uh, knowledge is spreading knowledge and awareness so we are doing corporate trainings workshops and uh, also educational programs mm-hmm. and even like we, uh, we have already done like more than 20 webinars which were free mm-hmm. and on fintech on and blockchain i do and see the etc yeah yeah they're, they're, by and the way uh, if anybody's interested in them they are online i and i saw a post from yours recently with a new seminar that you're you're doing uh on facebook is that that's yeah. correct right yeah so um yes. you know what after this i'll get a link from you i'll put in my description and whoever wants to you know see these seminars they can go to the website or they can go to the facebook posts and join these seminars because i think it will add a lot of value um because a few of the questions which are going to be coming up will kind of add on to this so Kat, sorry to cut you off keep going yeah 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 perfect so so alif technology is also uh, focusing on uh, pro- product development so like platform developments also is also there we have in-house resources and then we also have partners uh, 
which are actually technology companies mm-hmm. um and then uh, the third thing is about uh, advisory and consultancy yeah. so we are advising that how to implement technology now with sharia experts it has a very specific uh, scope but i think that uh, the uh, again uh, the problem is uh, you uh, you will not find expertise in this domain mm-hmm. uh, very often so which is basically sharia uh, services like sharia review sharia audit and uh, sharia governance uh, for specifically for fintech blockchain crypto assets defi nfts etc yeah so that is basically we are doing okay I- there's I, i you know i asked asked on my instagram people you know what questions they have for you uh i have a massive list um but before i go there i want to talk about so you talk about the concept of you know people learning about this and i and i'm a strong believer of educating others to make their own decisions like i respect you know people want fatwas but you know i as as a society we just want quick fatwas everybody wants a quick fatwa the i like the amount of questions i i can't give fatwas right i'm not as educated or like yourself and i'm not scholar there's accredited accreditations that you need but so this is what i'm trying to see say is that people need to educate themselves that they can confidently have the knowledge and confidently make the decision towards something like for example there's many cryptos that are just coming out every day and so as soon as a new crypto comes out i get a new message i get a new comment is this crypto halal um do you know and, and and you made a very important post on the group chat which i you know which i kind of reached out to you about um that the concept of people are just saying this is halal this is haram but they don't have a a pure base of understanding and knowledge so what i'm really trying to ask is how do we get knowledgeable in islamic finance and islamic finance when it comes to crypto and stocks we'll just say stocks also because they're part of the industry Yeah so i think that uh, given the uh, covid situation and the lockdowns and then economic crisis uh, unemployment rate is uh, getting higher and higher and uh, because of that uh, people are basically looking into alternative uh, income sources yeah. and that's where like online uh, investments like uh, investment investing in stocks in, in crypto assets is booming mm-hmm. so i really think that uh, it's com- it's a complete ecosystem and uh, there are so many options for you it's not only crypto so yeah. uh, similarly we are also advising people in not only in cryptos but of course uh, in in the traditional uh, when use all as well uh, to find sharia compliant uh, alternatives for investment for for income sources and uh, also to make some passive uh, passive income yeah. so this is one thing number two is uh, uh, yeah that people are actually really want uh, n- there are two things basically number one is quick fatwa and then favorable fatwa yeah so that is basically two things so like fatwa shopping is like if somebody says it is haram okay don't go to that go uh, find another mufti who can say that it is halal yeah 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 so so one the, uh, the the bad thing about this approach is that like you will end up being follow your own self Mm-hmm. other than the religion or islam mm-hmm. so we have to follow islam not ourselves mm-hmm. that is basically the basic point mm-hmm. now how can you do that uh, it's it's very simple you have to educate yourself um, at least for the basics with the basics of uh, islamic finance yeah. what is islamic commercial law what is riba what is uncertainty what is gharar yeah. so these are very very specific thing and a lot of literature has been there uh, on google you can find so many reliable sources over there mm-hmm. uh, and then even if you would like to you can you can also pursue some uh, very organized and also very uh, systematic courses yeah. uh, which are basically educational courses offered online mm-hmm. uh, by by reputation uh, reputable uh, institutions mm-hmm. so there are few actually uh, which are very very good and uh, these are courses which can basically equip you in a very short time with some just an understand fundamental understanding of what is islamic finance and how do you approach these things Amazing. number one number two is like uh, uh, this is the domain number two is like i think that that is basically uh, second uh, thing is be related to personal attitude and uh, mindset so we have to change our mindset that uh, in pakistan the saying is very famous that uh, everybody in pakistan is a born doctor 
and a mufti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so people are very and politician also. So these are the three things in Pakistan. They said that everybody in Pakistan is born with three talent. Number one is he's a born doctor, a mufti, and a politician. Yeah. <laughs> so Islamic scholar. Yeah. Mufti is Islamic scholar, by the way. So I think that uh, we need to change that. Giving fatwa is uh, is a very very huge responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you are even expressing your opinion on a platform that okay this is halal, this is haram, so you have to check with the at least uh, even if you are not checking with a mufti a qualified mufti at least check it by yourself and then express it in a in a way that it is not authoritative and yes confirmed. that's why so, if you ever see my videos in the ending of the video i always say it, i'm not giving fatwas i can't give fatwas and you're not paying me enough to give fatwas <laughs> i really i really like your approach actually. Yeah, right? this is basically uh, this is basically has to be promoted uh, among among the masses that whenever they are saying they do not have to impose their opinion they mm. have to say that this is my opinion and this is the reason behind it yeah. i might be wrong and i would be very happy to change it if, uh, exactly. if there is uh, there is any stronger opinion or argument against it yeah, yeah no yeah the same thing like i i i have like a little box that i put at the ending of the video and i also say it. so this is why i brought you here so i can say he can give fatwas i can <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so what I'll do is for the concept of education, because I think a lot of people are interested in getting like maybe some courses or something like that. Um, I'll reach out to you. I'll get a list of good quality courses, um, you know, and then I'll make a separate video after these videos come out, uh, which will specifically say, hey, this is the website you can go on. These are the courses. Um, and then you guys can do research on your own, try to figure out uh, yeah, which ones you guys want to do. Okay, the next question that kind of leads into this is how can I pursue a career in Islamic finance being in the Western world or being in the Middle East or being in Pakistan wherever okay so there are so many ways to do that like normally people think that uh, when you pursue a career in Islamic finance it means that uh, you you will learn something in the university first get a degree and then get hired by a bank mm -hmm. that's it yeah so but i think that no this is only one uh Avenue. one way to go yeah. but there are there are so many other ways so for example like uh, you can educate yourself uh, from various sources mm -hmm. uh, university accreditation uh, or uh, degree is uh, not required but uh, it is basically for a specific jobs of course it is required but uh, unfortunately it's it's quite amazing to see that like uh, I really find any job posting which says that we really we need uh, a qualified Islamic finance professional mm -hmm. profession uh, mm -hmm. person. So what I see is like they say that we need a finance professional mm -hmm. with some knowledge of Islamic, Islamic finance. finance yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is basically an irony or a dilemma. Islamic finance industry and professionals are, uh, the, especially new graduates, are facing. But I think that it has to change. Uh, but anyway, this is a side note, but uh, I was saying that, okay, you can get information and knowledge from various sources. Number one, you can get a degree if you would like to, or a certification from a professional body that is, uh, that is already there. And there are so many ways to do that mm -hmm. online, physical and, uh, and uh, other ways. Now, secondly is, uh, you can become a startup okay. and it's because with the boom of FinTech, you do not have to basically look for getting hired by a bank or mm -hmm. a financial institution mm -hmm. you can start with uh, with your own startup so you can basically have some sort of expertise mm -hmm. you build them you have a good idea you can go to a, a, a boot camp or accelerator program yeah and then you can start uh, building your own product or service whatever it is and then um, uh, provide it and now then you can go to the market with your product either directly mm -hmm. uh, and then you compete with the financial institutions or you can complement those financial institutions because of course these big financial institutions uh, do not have uh, capabilities to do everything yeah. right so sometimes there is a very niche area very specific service or even a part or component of that service which they are lacking in yeah. and they can actually do a uh, uh, partnership with you or, uh, or do a uh, collaboration with a startup to to address this issue yeah. and also 
to um, make the product perfect. So that is one approach. Second approach is of course, like you can get hired by a financial institution. Now the third thing is like, even if you are an expert of Islamic finance, you can get hired by a non-financial institution yeah. because finance is basically part and parcel of every organization. Yeah. And uh, if let's suppose that uh, one organization, whether it is uh, uh, albeit it is not a financial institution, but a non-financial institution in the institution like uh, any industry, but they want to do their finances in a Sharia compliant manner. Yeah. So you can get hired over there as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I saw uh, um, with the IOFI uh, website, they give accreditations specifically for auditing. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is opportunities there. You just got to make yourself um, aware. Maybe you, maybe people can watch my first three videos on how to get hired and how to find a job and <laughs> use that tool. And, and you can find out how you can network yourself into a good position in Islamic finance. And then, Kat, what you just said. I think goes in hand in hand with the hadith that we mentioned before about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the concept of nine to one uh, earnings. Um, and by the way, that hadith is, is something that I, keeps me going. Um, it, I, I remind myself all the time because, you know, you get used to the whole nine to five and you, you put your life around it. Okay, Kat, um, so now I just want to play a quick game before I jump into more questions because I know we had a few questions that were... Uh, pretty uh you know islamic finances so i want to have a quick uh, a little fun try to show people that even muftis can have fun they're not boring uh because I, I know you a little bit because we had a call and and, and uh, we had a little bit uh, of a, a fun discussion so quick fire round okay um so i'll just say out a few words i want you to say back the first thing that comes to your mind okay okay all right um tiktok you do not want to miss out part two. In part two, we talk about Dogecoin. We talk about the future of crypto. Some of the cryptos that he is invested in also. And some amazing news that may change up the future of crypto and Islamic finance. So don't miss out. Subscribe to the channel and wait for part two to come up. Take care. Assalamualaikum.